that had a little bit more of those beige tones in them. So I really think that we found the perfect slabs for I started my short-term rental journey just like most other hosts, renting my apartment and then eventually my tiny house. But then I started to notice something crazy. Come check out my tent. Some hosts were literally making thousands of dollars a month renting teepees and safari tents. But what was even crazier was that the cost to purchase these tents was anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000. This was not the camping I thought I knew. Ah, uh, it's like I'm not even camping. Now this was something way more luxurious and way more profitable. This was glamping and I just knew I had to get in. But little did I know, this would eventually become a six-figure business. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rob Built. I'm your host, Rob. Today we're gonna to be talking about glamping, and this is actually gonna be the first installment of my glamping series that's gonna be going live this month. So, what is glamping? Put simply, it stands for glamorous camping. Glamping, and really what this means is it's an elevated camping experience, right? Camping is a tradition that's been around since like, forever <laughs> and really it's a fun experience but it's not necessarily for everybody right not everybody wants to you know sleep in very cold temperatures or in very hot temperatures or <laughs> in the same vicinity as mosquitoes all night so glamping really caters to people that are looking for that elevated camping experience and this can really mean like a multitude of things instead of having your typical $50 tent maybe you have a very thick canvas safari tent or instead of having your vinyl tent you have a vinyl geodome or a Mongolian hut or an air Stream. And really as part of this glamorous camping experience, you're offering certain amenities that you typically wouldn't get out in the wild. And really quick, if you're interested in learning about my favorite glamping units to get started with, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below to a handout of my favorite glamping vendors that are probably the lowest cost to get you started. So be sure to download that. What's happening behind me? So be sure to download that before the world ends. For my glam sites out in Arizona, I offer things like memory foam mattresses that are really nice and plush, like super thick down comforters to keep you warm when it's 10 degrees outside, a mini fridge, solar panels and batteries to charge your precious, precious phones, and things like two burner camper stoves that run on propane so that you can cook a quick meal like eggs or boil water for our French press with coffee that we provide to our guests. Now, of course, these are very simple amenities, but when it's five degrees outside and you're inside of one of my safari tents that has a cast iron wood stove that's rated for a 1500 square foot house, you would be very thankful for that very simple amenity. And you're gonna wanna thank me for that simple amenity by tapping the like button. Now I wanna talk about how I got into glamping. I was just at the beginning of my short term rental journey and I remember I would always look at other people's like vacation rentals and just be like super inspired by them and super jealous by them and everything in between. And I just remember looking at Airbnb and saying like, man, this person's house is so cool or this person's apartment is so cool. One day I'm gonna have listings that are so cool. And I was looking at LA and I kind of zoomed out on accident and saw like a teepee in Joshua Tree. And I was like, what? You can rent a teepee on Airbnb. So I clicked into it and their calendar was completely booked out. And I remember just running the calculations and I was like $200 a night times 25 nights a month, that's $5,000. And I was like, no, there is no way this person is making $5,000 a month. That's $60,000 a year. Then I started looking at other listings like Airstreams and Safari tents and even a spaceship. And these hosts were making anywhere from 40 to $65,000 a year. And I was so angry at this because I wasn't making 40 to $65,000 a year. And I remember texting one of my business partners and saying something like, dude, let's put a tent in the middle of the desert. This text right here is how my glamping business came to fruition. So we put a tent in the middle of the desert. And I remember us thinking like, man, if we can make like anywhere from 500 to thousand dollars on this $3,000 tent, we'll be happy boys. But what we didn't expect is that we would be fully booked for the next three months, grossing $5,500 a month. Actually, let me run that calculation and I'll tell you exactly how much we made. Yeah, so about $5,000, $49.50, somewhere around there, about $5,000 a month is what we were making when we first launched our very first tent. And I remember us being so blown away by this because it crushed every other form of real estate that we dabbled in. We did the rental arbitrage thing. I was doing house hacking. We bought a condo in Austin, Texas. And yeah, as we started to realize the potential of this business, we started expanding as quickly as we could. Now with that said, you can't just go out and make a large amount of money without putting work into it, right? We had to figure out how to manage our campsite. Who was gonna 
manage our glam site? Who is gonna clean our listings? Who is gonna replenish our firewood, our propane, our coffee, and everything in between? There were a lot of logistics to work out, but we were willing to do that because this was a relatively cheap experiment. The tent was $3,000, and I think our all-in cost was about $10,000. Fast forward to today and we have a couple of safari tents. We have a Mongolian hut, we have a vintage Airstream and a tiny A-frame and they all perform spectacularly. And really quick, if you're interested in learning more about the logistics of setting up your own glamping business or how to manage it from a day-to-day -day standpoint, I've got a very thorough program coming out here in the next month called the Raw Built Glamp Camp. And if you're interested in signing up for it, I'll leave a link in the description down below where you can get on the wait list or you could always sign up for a one-on-one -on -one Zoom consultation with me and we'll work out a roadmap that works best for you. I want to get into why glamping is one of my favorite forms of real estate for someone that's either looking to diversify their portfolio or for someone looking to get into real estate but doesn't necessarily have a big down payment to put on a house. So first and foremost, one of my favorite things about glamping is how approachable it is for a newbie investor looking to get into real estate from a cost standpoint. Now remember, I said the original investment for my tent was about $3,000 and roughly speaking, we were $10,000 all in. But for the most part, I think if you wanted to replicate that model yourself, you would spend anywhere from ten dollars to $20,000. Roughly speaking, in my program I laid out at about sixteen to twenty thousand dollars is what you would spend to kind of hire out all the different trades hire out people building your decks your bathrooms and having a very simple glamping setup time to get busy such a lot to do building and fixing till it's good as new However, if you wanted to do a lot of the work yourself and you were very smart about some of your furnishing choices and your off-grid components and everything like that, I think you could get in around ten dollars to $12,000, but it's gonna ultimately depend on how resourceful you are. I also think that it fulfills a need for housing in a lot of these key markets that would be accepting of glamping, namely national parks. Consider Gatlinburg, Tennessee, for example. I live here, I'm right outside of the Great Smoky Mountains. 12.1 million people came here in 2020. There are 3,000 Airbnbs in this town. So there's a bit of a discrepancy between the 3,000 short term rentals in this town and the 12.1 million people that visit here, right? And this really applies across the board for a bunch of national parks. I personally think there aren't enough short term rentals to service the amount of traffic coming into these national parks. And when you really examine the options in these towns, you come across, across, not a real word, across. Gosh, I hate when people say across. Anyway, You'll come across poorly furnished Airbnbs with photos that were taken on potato phones. You'll come across Super 8s, creaky old haunted hotels, and Motel 6s. Hi, Tom Baudet here of Motel 6. Do you like when your sheets smell like cheese? How about hand soap that you're pretty sure has been used before and repackaged because upon closer inspection you found a really suspicious curly hair and how about knowing deep down inside that someone's been brutally murdered in your motel room? twice. So I think there's a huge opportunity to come in and offer a unique experience with premium furnishings and professional photography and capture a large part of that tourism market. And in general, I think that a lot of people are looking to escape from big cities and go seclude themselves, I don't know if these were necessary, and have a unique experience where they can kind of socially distance on their own. Now I'm never going to sit here and say that the glamping business is pandemic proof because it's not. but. I think it's a little resistant. I mean, a lot of hosts were losing their leases or going bankrupt or losing their houses during the pandemic because they weren't getting visitors that were going to visit them in downtown LA or New York or Houston or Chicago or Pittsburgh or Missoula. Actually, maybe, I don't know, or Las Vegas. But on the flip side of that, people who were offering unique experiences outside of the city came out the other end okay. Weirdly enough, we weren't expecting this, but my glamping business actually posted its most successful months in September and October of 2020. And lastly, what I think I like the most about the glamping business is that it caters to all audiences. There are a lot of people that are adventurous and love camping and they love the great outdoors and I applaud them for that. Me and my wife, however, and a lot of other people that I know, we're not fans of sleeping in 10 degree weather outside, right? So having a cast iron stove and a memory foam mattress and a mini fridge and not having to poop in the ground, I will not poop in the ground. I will bury a body in the ground, but I won't poop in the ground. So having an option like a composting toilet with like a toilet seat to me is a huge game changer that makes camping a lot more approachable to people like me and my wife who are admittedly like babies when it comes to the elements. So I know you're probably asking yourself, are people actually willing to pay for an experience where they still sleep outside and poop in a bucket when they can just go to a hotel or motel and have insulation and heating and water and cable TV? Uh, yes, and to prove that, I'm just gonna jump into Airbnb and show you what other people are doing and maybe even calculate how much they're making. I legitimately understand why you would be skeptical about this, because I was too, but 
just, just wait. Let's take a look at what other people are doing. And remember, if you wanna know what glamping units to get started with, I'm gonna leave a link down below to my top five favorite glamping vendors. So I'm gonna check out a new market that I've never actually researched before, but I've heard good things. Let's do Moab, Utah. So, stays in Moab. We have 300 plus stays in the city. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Actually, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Okay, and then go to more filters. And when you go to more filters, you can actually go down. There's gonna be two options here. You're gonna see property type and you're gonna see unique stays. So don't click anything in the property type. I wanna go to unique stays. So if you see anything here, if you see campsite, hut, tiny house, yurt, PP tent, farm stay and camper RV, if you have the option to click on something, that means that at least one of these things exists in Moab. So why don't we go with hut, tiny house, yurt, TP tent, camper RV. Cool, 46 stays in Moab. So I'm gonna go with the Red Rock teardrop number six with rooftop tent, cool. Do that. Fun stays glamping setup tent in RV park. Cool. TP. Awesome. All right, let's start our search there. So let's start with this one. They've got a glamping TP inside of an RV park. Okay, they've got a 4.86 rating, 116 reviews, meaning they're pretty established. So going down to their calendar, if we go down to March here, they are fully booked for March, for the rest of March. That means that today is the 14th, that is 17 days. So assuming that they actually book for 109 a night, let me just check here real fast. Looks like they charge 130, wow, May, 130. Okay, so there looks like they actually charge closer to $130 a night. So 130 times the rest of March, which is gonna be 17 nights. So far, for the rest of March, they've booked 2210. Now, if you look here on Airbnb, it says this is a rare find. Fun stays place on Airbnb is usually fully booked. That's typically indicative that this place is typically running anywhere from a 90 to 100% occupancy. So if that is true and they booked all of March, 130 times 31 nights, for March, they booked $4,000, $4,030. And I'd like to say that's crazy, but it pretty much confirms what I'm making. So now let's comp out what they're making in April. So far, they still have two weeks to book the remainder of April. So counting this out here, three plus seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So, so far in April, they have booked 15 times $130 a night, 1950, 1950. In May, they've already booked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So, so far for May, they have booked $1,500 and we haven't even gotten to May yet. All to say that I predict this listing is making anywhere from about forty dollars to $55,000 depending on seasonality out in Moab. So now let's go on to the next one. So now let's do the Red Rock Teardrop trailer number four. I'm not crying. Pretty nice little teardrop trailer here. Um, very cool pictures in a great setting, I'll give them that. I mean, very nice topography. Um, and it's a premium teardrop. I mean, this is one of the nicer ones that I've seen. Not exactly sure how much something like this would cost, but I'd estimate somewhere in the 30 to $45,000 region for something this small. So cool, I like it. They charge $109 a night. They are a 4.9 rating. And they have 49 reviews, meaning they're, you know, they're getting there. They're, they're getting to being pretty established in my book. So moving down to their calendar here, there's nothing available in March. Okay, in April they have one, two, three, four, five nights available. Let me make sure that what they're charging is actually consistent. So they charge about 119 a night. Let me go here into May, 119. So it looks like their average nightly rate is actually closer to 119. And as you can see here, this is a rare find. Wendy's place is usually fully booked, meaning they're probably running at a 90 to 100% occupancy. So with that said, this specific trailer right here, so far in March, assuming that they probably booked 100%, 119 times 31. More than likely they booked about $3,700 this month. In April though, let's just go ahead and forecast what they've made. So far, they've made 1, 2, 3 plus 14, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So far in April, we're still two weeks out, they have booked roughly $2,500 for this uh, teardrop trailer. I mean, it's again, it's pretty nice, but let's just say that they are booking for 80% of the year, which I think is pretty fair. That's 292 days out of the year. So 292 times 119, they're grossing roughly $34,748. Now, of course they probably have expenses and supplies and all that kind of jazz, but just so you know, from a potential standpoint, something like this could gross $35,000. Meaning if you bought a teardrop trailer like this, 
you could possibly be pretty close to paying it off in your first year. Or let's say that it's $40,000 to, to finance. $40,000 and you finance it over, let's say six years at 4% interest, which is probably pretty high on something like that. Your monthly payment on something like this would be $625 a month. Now, if you were grossing about $35,000, like we said, you have divide that by 12, you're averaging about $2,900 gross. Now subtract the note of the teardrop trailer, 625. And then let's just go ahead and put bills and expenses and, and rents and all that kind of stuff. I'll go very high here and say $791 just to keep the math simple minus $791. That means you could potentially profit about $1,500 on this specific setup. So times 12, an $18,000 profit. Now I recognize that's not a crazy amount of money, but you know it's a crazy amount of money though if you had five of these. That's $90,000 a year. That's a full-time salary right there. That's more than a full-time salary. I mean, it's easy to run away with these numbers, but start with one. This is one example on a teardrop trailer. Let's go to my backyard here and do Joshua Tree. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend Joshua Tree, and just full disclosure, I'm not even doing glamping in Joshua Tree because it's very, very difficult to actually permit these things, but I'll kind of show you what's possible out there. So, um, the Aquarius, cool. Let's take a look at that. The Aquarius tent, $101 a night. Pretty nice, and why not? Let's do this this Airstream. So the Aquarius, going down here, they've got 129 reviews, 4.92, so pretty, you know, pretty decently established. Very nice setup, solar, all the shebang, boho chic, they got a telescope, they got string lights. Really like what they've done. Would love to see professional photos, but overall pretty good. And looks like, for the most part, they are fully booked in March and April. Let's just make sure that, yep, yeah, wow, they really are. So they've got the 13th open in April, and then we've got, this is a rare find, meaning they are booking about $3,000 a month. March fully booked, April 2,900. In May, so far, they have booked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 2100 dollars is what this place is booked. Let's make sure that that's their actual nightly rate. Yeah, they book for $100 a night pretty consistently. They've, they've got the, this is a rare find designation on Airbnb. And again, it's a really nice place. Obviously they put a lot of thought and care into something like this. So yeah, people are looking for this unique experience. Uh, last one here, just to kind of round it out. Okay, we got a tiny little Airstream here, an awesome deck, a shade sail, string lights, cute professional photos. This is what I love to see, the interior. Pretty much flawless. Um, to me, this is pretty close to a five-star experience. Goes to show that people agree, 4.91, 195 reviews. They are booking for $180 a night. Nothing available in March, nothing available in April. Their first available day is March 30th through the first, and they're pretty much booked out from that point. Now you wanna verify if they actually are booked out by looking at the reviews. So we've got February 2021, January 2021. So that means that they are actually operating right now. So let's just say that they are pulling a perfect month on $181 a night, 181 times 30, $5,400 is what they would pull. Now let's say that they're doing 80% occupancy throughout the year. So that's 292 nights a year times $181, 52,000. I'm angry looking at that number. 52,000 is what this tiny little Airstream, this adorable little Airstream is pulling. Now, something like this isn't super cheap. An Airstream like this could cost you like $30,000. Let's say another $10,000 for a deck and the shade sale and the furnishings and all that kind of stuff. So they're into this thing between 40 and $50,000, not including the actual land itself. But either way, I think that there's some wiggle room on this because the ROI on these things are just absolutely insane. Remember, long-term real estate, the returns are typically like a very good return in the long-term side of things is about a 10% cash on cash return. When you're looking at something like this, your returns on glamping can be anywhere from 50 to 200% ROI. Taking my personal safari tent, for example, I think our overall profit on our first tent, the first year after all expenses was pretty close to about $30,000. So our ROI on our very original flagstone listing was 300%. I'm not just blowing smoke here, I'm doing it. And so are a lot of other people. And I'm really, I'm happy to see other people succeed because I'm such a big fan of the space and the creativity that people bring to the platform. Now, again, I do wanna reiterate, Joshua Tree is kind of a tough market to do this in, but I promise you there are hundreds, if not thousands of places across the entire country that you can start your own glamping business and go and price out roughly what it would cost you to put a glamping tent or an Airstream or a yurt or a geodome and just run the numbers yourself. In my opinion, if you have a pretty decent setup, you can charge at least, at least $100 a night. So running at an 80% occupancy occupancy like a lot of other hosts do, that would put you at least at around $30,000 a year that you could gross on a property. And lastly, I didn't want to just show you a bunch of listings without showing you one of mine. So I'm going to show you the very first bell tent that I ever put up in my glamping operation. We call it the Lotus Bell. And if you scroll down here to our calendar, you'll see that 
our March, there's not a single date there. Now remember, we're about midway through the month now, so you can't actually see into the past. But if you look into April, we only have two days available. And if you click on the 14th and 15th, then you'll see we have that designation. This is a rare find. And as you can see, we do run at a pretty high occupancy, especially from March all the way through about mid-November. It's a very good season for us right now. But don't just take my word for it. Go on to Airbnb and go to the city that you're in and go to the closest national park or state park or national forest that's closest to you right now and go and look at the unique stays that are close to you and count up all the gray dates on their calendar and multiply it by their average daily rate and estimate how much they're making. And I think you're gonna be surprised. And I totally realize that the wheels are probably turning for you right now and you don't know where the best place to put these are. Don't worry, my next video is gonna go more in depth on where in the country you can set up your own glamping business. So tune in for that. Don't forget, I've got my glamping program coming out pretty soon. So again, if you're interested in taking that, get on the wait list down in the description below. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever next week's video on locations comes out. So yeah, I'll catch you on the next episode of Raw Built. And if you want more content to binge on, then watch one of these guys right here and subscribe right there. All right, see ya.